Good morning, Magnet Mustangs. I'm back with another fun story today. This is another one of my favorites by Carmen Agraditi. It's Agatha's Feather Bed, not just another wild goose story. Uh, it has a great little lesson to it. It also is filled with lots of puns, which I thoroughly enjoy. As you listen, uh, think about if it sounds familiar to you that has uh, an O. Henry twist to it. So I hope you enjoy. Agatha's Feather Bed. Do you see that little shop sandwiched between two skyscrapers? The shop belongs to my friend Agatha. She spins yarn and weaves cloth, which she sells. The patterns she weaves are so amazing and the colors so beautiful that people come from all over Manhattan to buy her wares. Agatha loves to talk and she tells wonderful stories. In fact, you can say that Agatha spins a yarn better than anyone I know. Here's one she told me the other day, and I know it must be true because even Agatha couldn't have made this one up. One afternoon, a little boy was shopping with his mother in Agatha's fabric shop. He was very bored and began playing with a shiny scrap of red cloth. Agatha leaned down and said to him, that's silk, do you know where it comes from? He shook his head. It comes from worms, said Agatha. Worms, he exclaimed. Why yes, silkworms, said Agatha. Wow, what kind of worm does this come from? He asked, holding up a ball of purple cotton yarn. Well, that's a very good question, Agatha replied. That's cotton, and it doesn't come from a worm at all. It comes from a cotton bowl that grows right out of the ground. What about the rest of this stuff? Asked the boy. Does it come from neat places too? Oh yes, this is wool, and it comes from sheep. That's easy. You're right, she said. Now, this cloth is linen. Feel how stiff it is. I bet you can't guess where it comes from. The little boy thought and thought. Finally, he asked, well, where does it come from? A plant called flax, answered Agatha. Let me tell you something I tell all of my customers, especially children. Everything comes from something. Nothing comes from nothing. Just like paper comes from trees and glass comes from sand, an answer comes from a question. All you have to do is ask. It made the little boy smile. That evening, after everyone had gone home, Agatha went upstairs to her apartment. Several months earlier, she had ordered a new feather bed from her favorite catalog, BB Lean. <laughs> it had just arrived that very day. Her old mattress was so lumpy and bumpy, and it was like sleeping on coal lumps and cherry pits. Quickly, she changed into her nightgown and brushed and flossed her teeth. She took out the tortoise shell pins and her long white hair fell and fell and fell until it lay in swirls around her feet. Then she brushed it with her boar bristle, boar bristle brush. Agatha had never even finished her 100 strokes. She was so eager to try out that new mattress. She settled into bed and in minutes she was sound asleep. Agatha dreamed that her room was filled with strange sounds, hush whispers, and the pitter-patter of little feet. Suddenly, she awoke with a start as she heard her window close with a thud. She turned slowly in bed and saw that standing across her windowsill were six naked geese. They were shivering in the cold and covered with goosebumps. She caught them just as they had ducked out. Agatha stared and stared. You could have knocked her over with the feather. At last, she opened the window and asked, may I help you? The smallest goose, Sydney, stepped into the room. He pointed his pink little wing at Agatha's bed and said, we want our feathers back. What? asked Agatha. Feathers, Agatha. Feathers. You know, we've been listening. Everything comes from something. Nothing comes from nothing. Just like paper comes from trees and glass comes from sand. The feathers in a feather bed don't grow on trees, my dear, said the little goose. Where did you think those feathers in your feather bed came from? Agatha looked at the bed and she looked at the geese. And she looked at the bed and she looked at the geese. Something in her sensed that her goose was cooked. I hate to tell you, uh, I have to tell you, we mean business, Agatha, said Sydney. 
I wouldn't mess with a gaggle of angry naked geese. We're not just a bunch of quacks. This could get ugly. But Agatha had already made up her mind. She had worked hard to earn the money to buy her feather bed. And yet she thought, what about those poor plucky little guys left out in the cold? I'll tell you what, said Agatha, a little down in the mouth. Get back to me in three days, trust me. And she gave them her credit card so they could book up at the downtown motel. Taking this as a sign of goodwill, they left quietly. They hoped she wasn't sending them on a wild goose chase. Akatha didn't waste a minute. She went downstairs to her sewing room, snatched her scissors, and got straight to work. For three days, she didn't open her shop or speak to anyone. On the third night, just as they had agreed, the geese came tapping at her window. This time, Agatha was expecting them. She had left the window open, and she smiled to herself as they popped in, one by one. We're back, Agatha, said Sydney. We had a great time with that credit card. They kept wanting to give us a bill, but we just said no thanks. The last thing we need is another bill, and... But he never finished his sentence, and he looked across the room. He saw hanging on her wall were six white fleecy coats. Agatha had spun and woven and sewn each one. The geese were extremely grateful and thanked her kindly. Each goose slipped into his new coat and took a gander in the mirror. As they were about to leave, Sydney turned to Agatha and said, you know, Agatha, these are really magnificent coats. Whatever did you make them from? Agatha sat up in the bed and the geese saw that their coats were made from for the suspense, Agatha's hair. Agatha smiled and said, everything comes from something. I have your feathers and you have my hair. What's good for the goose is good for the gander, eh, Sydney? Oh, Agatha, said one of the geese, you keep us in stitches. By the way, Agatha, added Sydney, chuckling, your hair looks just ducky. And lucky for you and me, hair grows back just like feathers. Agatha says she never heard another honk from her fine feathered friends. However, someone's been leaving fresh goose eggs on her doorstep every morning. Where do goose eggs come from anyway? Hmm. So I hope you've enjoyed the lesson from Agatha's feather bed. Everything comes from something and nothing comes from nothing. So, um, you know, I think about what all that means to us and it, it's true for friendship and loyalty to our friends and our family. It's true about the resources on our earth. It's true about um, all the environmental uh, things that we have going on in the world. So uh, as you go off into uh, your futures, think about the fact that everything comes from something and nothing comes from nothing. And with hard work and determination, you can um, build up a life for yourself that's wonderful and successful and never take for granted where everything we have and what everything we have comes from. Hope you're having a great day. And I really wish that you could have seen my husband's face as I was reading this story. It took just about everything in him not to laugh out loud at all of the silly puns. So it was an added extra fun for me watching him try and keep his composure so that I didn't crack up and have to take uh, a sixth try on reading this uh, this book for you today. So have a great day. We miss you. We'll see you soon. Bye.